If you've been reading blogs or watching videos to get better at collaboration, you might find it difficult to apply these things to your business. Today, I'm gonna to give you some specific real world scenarios of how we use tools in our business to better collaborate. Hopefully these examples can help you understand how you might apply these tools to your organization. If you're new to this channel and use Microsoft 365 often, this whole channel is focused on tools and strategies to help you be successful in creating a better workplace. Make sure you like and subscribe to get notified of our latest videos and help others find them. So the first tool I wanna to talk about is Slack. Slack is by far the most utilized collaboration tool within our business. You might be asking yourself why we're using Slack instead of Teams. I'm not gonna get into that too much. We have a whole podcast on the topic that we'll link in the description below. The short version is we started using Slack before Teams was a really viable alternative. Now let's talk about the approach that we take to using Slack in our business. The vast majority of channels within our Slack implementation are public. We only create private channels if there's some sensitive information that needs to be protected. You may be thinking having so many public channels will create too much noise. To manage this, we train each new employee on how to use Slack, specifically how to manage what channels and notifications they receive. Just to drive home how important channels are to us, only 20% of our messages are direct messages versus 51% of the messages are in public channels. Let's talk about file storage. Slack isn't great dealing with files. File management on Teams and SharePoint is much better. So in most scenarios, we do not upload files to Slack. Instead, we post links of files that exist in SharePoint or Teams. Yes, we use both Slack and Teams. We'll get to how we use Teams in a minute. Lastly, we've spent quite a bit of time integrating Slack to provide automatic notifications, reminders, links, so that we can easily use Slack as part of all of the other tools we use. The most dynamic types of channels we use are related to projects and clients. We'll create a new project or client specific channel as needed and will be targeted just to the content of that project or client. Beyond project related channels, we have a few private channels that run our business. Some examples of these are operations, which is a private channel where we talk about invoicing, benefits, pre-sales planning, etc. Another channel is leadership. This is a private channel for Mike, Mitch, me. We discuss business strategy, our personal failings, and collaborate as a leadership team. If I had to predict where we would be in a year or two, we likely will be more Teams focused than Slack focused. Teams is our main project management meeting file management platform. Every channel in Slack has a corresponding team or channel in Teams. This is because Teams is just way better at file collaboration than Slack. And Teams offers a variety of out-of-the-box applications that make our lives easier. We usually don't invite customers or guests into our Teams. This is primarily because the current version of Teams isn't great at having Teams and multiple tenants. Instead, we create shared channels or share individual folders with our customers. This is because we don't use the channel functionality within Teams very often. We are also guests or have dedicated accounts in a number of client tenants. So we often have multiple Teams windows open at the same time. Overall, I wish we could just switch to Teams only. I'm very interested to see where we will be in about a year when the new Teams is fully rolled out. The next tool I wanna to talk about is OneDrive. This is the tool that sits behind the scenes for all our users. Our Windows users automatically have their folders synced to OneDrive. And since we don't use channel meetings, all of the meeting recordings are stored in OneDrive. This is a tool many of our team use without even thinking about it. As such, we don't really love or hate OneDrive. It just does what we need it to do. Now let's talk about Loop. This is a very new tool for us as it is for most people, but it's sort of taken over our world. It has quickly become the main tool for blog drafts, project notes, document creation, etc. Before people would use Notion or Whimsical, OneNote, Word, Planner, but now it's all going in Loop. Since our use of Loop is so new and it isn't really a completed application, I don't really wanna to share too much about how we're using it, but one example I will give is that up until recently we were storing 
all of our project notes in one big workspace. That didn't work out so well, and we quickly had to change to using dedicated workspaces for each project. If you watch any of our content on Loop, you'll know that we're in love with it. It has limits, but if Microsoft gets it right, we really think it can transform collaboration for many teams. So far, we've talked about kind of general collaboration. Now let's move into more project management. As you might imagine, we have lots of projects going on at one time, and we need a tool to help manage these projects and the associated tasks. Planner is the most common tool we use for basic project task management. It works well for internal and external teams. It just is enough for what we need. As an example, we have internal planner boards for content, like blogs, podcasts. Most projects will have a planner board that manages and prioritizes tasks. Some projects will even share that planner board with the customer to give them visibility and control of our priorities. Planner isn't the only tool we use, and we wish it had more powerful options, but for 80% of our needs, it's the right tool for us. Okay, this is the last tool and it might be a little bit of a surprise given our public stance on email. Internally, we use Outlook for all of our personal and shared calendars, which is the most common use of Outlook internally. The other main usage we have for Outlook is with customers. Very often customers will be just starting to figure out how to collaborate with tools other than email and we'll start out working with them directly in email to make it easy for them as they transition. With all that said, that doesn't change our perspective that email is not a good collaboration platform and should be avoided wherever possible. Now that we've talked about the tools we use on a regular basis, let's talk about a few tools that we're still looking for. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is calendars. I know I talked about calendars being in Outlook and we do use them. We also use calendars in lists and planner and teams. However, each of those kind of have their own implementation of calendars and they're not well aligned or well integrated. So we would really love to see a calendaring solution where we can kind of mix and match and have these things relate to each other so that we have one experience for dealing with calendars. Next, task management. Yes, I said we use Planner. Yes, Planner is great for most of our needs. We really wish we had one tool though. That 20% creates a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, if we're using, let's say DevOps or we're using Project for the Web, it's a completely different tool set with a different interface, a different paradigm. Also, they're not super integrated with one another. It would be really great if Planner just had a few more power features where it would cover maybe 90% of the scenarios instead of 80. Let's talk about whiteboarding. We used to have several tools to help us whiteboard in a digital space, primarily for meetings. Uh, the tools we usually use are like Microsoft Whiteboard or Whimsical. Microsoft Whiteboard is way better than it was when it launched, but it's still got some feature gaps and some challenges for us in our use cases. Whimsical, it, it costs money. Uh, for the amount that we use it, it's probably just not, it's not useful for us. We would love to see some improvements to Whiteboard or another option that isn't as expensive, but provides a lot of the feature-rich cloud collaboration ability that is there in Whimsical. The last thing would be diagramming. Uh, this is similar to whiteboards, but really it's a little bit different. Microsoft's version would be Visio, so it would be a way to create you know, technical diagrams or workspace diagrams. Visio hasn't kept up with the times, so we would love to have a more modern tool that we could use for diagramming. So that's it. Those are the tools that we use on a daily basis to collaborate. Hopefully seeing how we use these tools in our business will help you put the next tutorial you watch into practice.